Hello legend, welcome back to Create Inc. This is another installment of the STL review series. Up until this point, all the STLs that I've reviewed have been given very positive scores. That's because I only print the things that I want to use myself and those are generally the things that I've tested well with other people. Not this one though. The makes and comments on its printables page are a complete mystery to me so far. I mean, the design is great. I like the aesthetics of it, don't get me wrong. It looks kind of rugged. But the instruction to print it in VAS mode makes no sense at all. And we would get into why that is, but a disclaimer before we do. I printed mine with a 0.4mm nozzle. That's stock on most 3D printers, including my Prusa Mark 3S. The OP has printed theirs with a 0.6mm nozzle, but I'd explain in a minute why that is completely irrelevant and it still doesn't make any sense to print it in VAS mode. So, if you print the model in VAS mode with a 0.4mm nozzle, it's completely unusable as anything but maybe some really fancy wrapping paper. And then too, how many gifts can you really fit into this tiny container? What is more is that in VAS mode, you can only print one item at a time. So either the bottom or the top at a time. If you do that, the total print time comes somewhere around two and a half hours. File that information in your mind for later, it's going to come into play. In the end, you end up with this flimsy excuse for a container. I already broke two of these. First one never made it off the build plate. I pulled hard on it and the bottom remained stuck to the build plate and the rest broke off. That is partially my own fault because I tend to print things at a lower temperature to avoid stringing. Yep, those are really the temperatures I use for Eason PLA. I know most people go higher than that, but it has never been a problem for me and the prints look cleaner. I increased the temperatures and tried again, and this time it worked. I got a container as advertised. But again, I broke it while shooting footage for this very video. So I had to print a third one. Here's the thing though. If instead you make it double walled, that is twice the thickness, and print both the bottom and the top at the same time, the total print time comes somewhere around two and a half hours. All this is applicable to the 0.6mm nozzle just the same. You can clearly see and hear how much sturdier this one is it just feels more solid in my hand. The downside being maybe a few artifacts when the nozzle jumps between the two objects. But then again, if you have your retraction dialed in correctly, it's almost a non-issue. This is usable. You can throw it in a bag and it won't break. Now, take a break and ask yourself, what mistake did I make in the last part? While you consider that, I'd like to remind you that I do everything on my videos from the graphics to the animations and even the music. So if you like my content, throw a like and a comment for the algorithm. The comment part is very important. Just comment the name of your crush and they'd text you. I promise, I'm magic. And of course, subscribe for future videos. Now back to the mistake I made. There is one that's staring you right in the face. I didn't catch it the first time and I ended up with a bad print. Since I just made the model double walled in the slicer, I messed up the tolerances for the screw cap and it didn't quite fit and then I used force to make it fit and come time to unscrew it, this happened. There was a simple fix, just slightly scale up the top, the inside is supposed to be 66mm, if I scaled it up such that the whole top is 67mm in diameter, it would have worked because the extrusion width is supposed to be 0.5mm. Is that what I did though? Nope. Because I'm a moron. I took the models into Blender, I applied Solidify to the inside of the bottom and to the outside of the top, and that for some reason gave me a cap that was too loose for my bottom. So I went back, I scaled the top such that the diameter became 67mm, then I saved the model, sliced it and printed it. You know what they say, if it's stupid but it works, it's not stupid and it didn't make any meaningful difference to the printing time either. I have uploaded this version as a remix on printables, but only for the M size. And that's it. Now for the scores. I'd be scoring the original one, the one that's meant to be printed in VAS mode. For the aesthetics, I like them. 
It has a rugged look. I quite like that I mean business demeanor. It's a solid 3.8. Design, 2 out of 5. And that too is because it's easily fixable. Otherwise, I would have given it a 1. Printability, 4 out of 5. Really a breeze to print, nothing complex. Usability, again, 2.5 out of 5. With a 0.4mm nozzle, it's basically unusable. That gives us an average score of approximately 3. For the printing tips, if you are going to print this in vase mode anyway, I'd suggest that you use a bigger nozzle and print hotter, as hot as you can, so that there's good layer adhesion. Otherwise, the biggest tip would be to print it double walled and to do the scaling in the slicer itself. If you'd like your STLs to be reviewed, post them on our subreddit. The link is right on your screens and in the description. You can leave your thoughts in the comment section below. If you like my content, consider supporting me on Patreon. If you liked the video, you know what to do. If you didn't, the other one is really fine. Really, press one of them, any one of them. Subscribe for loads more content. And until next time, just keep building.